On this latest DWZ's discussion, as you know, there's been a change of leadership coming with the Bullet Club, which is a no surprise. We have seen leaderships come and go. But what do we think about this leadership with David Finley at the helm running Bullet Club? But the real question is, what can he bring to the table? What is exactly his true mission? And how can we compare him to the other leaders performed, such as Prince DeVette, AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, and of course, recently, Jay White. So we'll be talking all of that. So we'll be seeing, comparing what each of the uh, leaders brought to the table running Bullet Club, but what is now different about this Bullet Club, and what do we think about David Finley being the leader? So let's get ready for another DWZ Discussions. everyone welcome to dwz discussions where we discuss topics such as what we're doing right now with bullet club <laughs> so i am your host gerard here so as you all know i'm a big fan of the bullet club mostly coming from the aj styles era and of course kenny omega now as you know recently during the battle of after the events of the battle of the valley and of course the start of the New Japan Cup, there was a now new leadership in, with, for the Bullet Club. Since Jay White has been banished from Japan and New Japan Pro Wrestling, the obvious question did remain who was going to be running the club. Well, this one was a very interesting move, and this is, of course, David Finley, who I did not expect. But he is throwing a different type of direction that the Bullet Club of the leaders before him could never do. Now, let's talk about the leadership of e of the eras of every Bullet Club member that's been involved. Now, the original leadership was ran by Prince Devet, who you may know him now in WWE as Finn Balor. Now, the Bullet Club originally started out as a group that feel that there are a bunch of guy jeans who do not feel appreciated, especially when people like the Japanese promotion are bringing guy jeans down. So they wanted to prove wrong that they can be in main event moments. And of course, we all saw what happened to Prince Devet. He was super kicked out of the Bullet Club thanks to none other than the, Bull than the Young Bucks, which they disobeyed a direct order. And then, of course, the second leadership, the era of the phenomenal AJ Styles takes over. He makes an appearance by attacking, of course, Kaguchika Okada, who only considers him as a young boy. So basically, that's the set of thing. So he kind of redefined. He became the IWGP heavyweight cha champion when, of course, Yujiro Takahashi turned on his fellow teammates to chaos that led to him to that. And then finally, he was eventually super kicked out of the of the club thanks to Kenny Omega and attacked him. But in result of that, Kenny Omega became the leader of the Bullet Club. Now, we can debate about Kenny Omega, but one thing I do know that fans can agree upon, certain fans believe that Kenny did not make a big impact when it came to the, to the Bullet Club because he was mostly focused on the elite, most specifically with the Young Bucks. Now, I can tend to agree in all that. He did not bring much the attention of the Bullet Club that it needed until the Civil War began when, of course, Jay White got into the mix, becoming the leader of the Bullet Club. Now, Jay White's leadership was not called into question, but he fit perfectly because of his connections towards the Bullet Club members, more specifically Prince Devet, who has a connect he has a connection with, and not to top it all that, um he does he has met bad luck folly and that's how the whole thing began now people can say the uh, jay white's leadership has always been great not to mention since he reinvent himself 
known as the Catalyst, he brought in new members to the Bullet Club, such as Evil, um, Dick Togo, um, who else could, um, we could say. There's been those type of wrestlers that we were very... Oh, yeah, and Juice Robinson. Now, the leadership of that was called into question after Jay White lost not only the IWGP World Heavyweight title, but he lost to Eddie Kingston where he was banished. But all of a sudden, David Finley attacked him from behind, telling him what a stupid moron he is to lose everything. Now, we don't know why he did it until we started to question. Now, the question did remain, did Ghetto had anything to do with it? Did he gave the staff of approval to David Finley to beat up Jay White? That's always been the case. However, he wasn't the, the one of the members of of Bullet Club who is now expelled. El Fantasmo also brought that into question. The idea was not to beat up Jay White like the previous leaders, which he felt like let him run to the sunset. Now, I can see Fantasmo's reasons. Like he felt like why was not this brought upon? We believe that Ghetto had something to do with what happened to Jay White. And I think El Fantasmo did not like that. But more and more in questions about El Fantasmo. But what I did notice is how David Finley has been treating the Bullet Club. Now, we have seen El Fantasmo. He's a bit childish. I mean, it's who he is. I mean, we all can agree he's an asshole. But he just likes to have fun. To Finley, is more like, enough of this crap. We're taking things serious. So that's what he's trying to do. Enough with this crap. Just get things done. Seriously. But however, because of his issues towards El Fantasmo, it led to his expelment from the Bullet Club. And he did state that he found a new member to take over uh, El Fantasmo's spot. But now, J uh, El F but however, David Finley in recently in the Philly in, uh, f f uh, collision in Philadelphia, in New Japan, what they were doing. Finley explains the direction he wants to go with Bullet Club. He said that he's going to do the one thing that Bullet Club has failed to do when it came to their leaders. He's going to reshape the leadership, saying that what he wants is savages, killers, killer instinct wrestlers, wrestlers that knows they have to win. So basically, he feels that Bullet Club has gone too soft, too out of touch. And he may be right. So he's looking for wrestlers that have that killer instinct. And I think that's what he's looking for. So he feels that right now we need to get back on top, getting championships to change all of that. And I think Phantasma was one of those guys who did not fit the mold that he was looking for. So he's he recently recruited uh, Clark Connors, convincing him, saying that Shibata was a fool, not giving him the opportunities that he deserved. So that is something that was called into question. But however, there's also another pressing matter. He's declaring the splinter factions, such as uh, the ones in Australia, uh, ran by none other than Balak Fale, calling them bootleg. I'm like, Fale is an original member, the last of the OGs. So he's saying, no, you're not in the club until I say so. He did the same thing to, of, cor of course, to Bullet Club Gold. And that has been formed by none other than uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson. So basically, he feels that he makes the final say, if you're using a Bullet Club uh, name, then you don't have the right to it. So he acts like he runs the entire thing. We don't know exactly about the Australian group, how they are. But if I was um, Balak Fale, I would plead my case, that sort of thing. But how would he? F how would Finley feel about the Black, uh, Bullet Club Gold ran by Jay White and Juice Robinson. We'll see about that. Um, but I have to say that this new version is a very interesting to follow with the Bullet Club. We've seen what they did over the years. But now I'm going to say too close to this one. So I think that's pretty much it right now. What we have for this discussion. Um, stay tuned for the next episode. I haven't decided what's going to be. But I will probably do it anyway. So for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah.
and have a nice day. Bang.